Yahoo! Welcome, my beautiful brothers and sisters, fellow radiators of love, to Astro Phoenix flying into the moment yet again and radiating love as always. And welcome to your moon in Pisces transit video concluding this lunar cycle. And are you going to go for it? Are you going to go in the paint? Yes, I'm using another sports metaphor. I'm actually using another basketball metaphor. Interesting, because in the Capricorn video, I was using basketball as the metaphor. But instead of taking your shot, I'm talking about going in the paint, going for the goal, going for the hoop, going for that slam dunk, going for that magical slam dunk in your reality. This moon is going to make, be making a square over to Mars, which is now in Gemini. So this is going to be bringing up conversations and different, you know, uh, interactions with other people about, you know, how can you move forward? How can you bring about a spark to your reality? But also how to inject some magic into there. And the moon will be coming on top of Venus later on today, which is really big because, you know, Venus likes to be in Pisces. It's exalted here. And when the moon makes this connection, it's going to definitely bring about this this surge of creativity, this feeling that there is something more to our reality, there is something more that we can do. And this is going to be very powerful because, you know, the moon will be soon coming into the balsamic phase leading up to the new moon in Aries. A lot of times when we're going for what we want, we kind of fiddle around with it, you know, we kind of flirt with it and stuff, right? And that's why I wanted to use the metaphor of going in the paint as far as possible. Now, for those of you who aren't really uh, knowledgeable what that means, there is an area right outside of the goal or the hoop in basketball that is painted a certain color. It's painted a different color from the court around it. And there's something called points in the paint. So anytime you score when you're in this particular zone or if you get like a slam dunk or a layup, they're considered points in the paint. And a lot of times when we're going into the paint or when players are trying to get that basket, they are more highly contested shots, meaning that the opposing team, there's more of an opportunity for them to knock the ball away or to get a block. It's more, there's more defenses there in the paint. And a lot of times when we're going for things in our life and we're wanting to manifest we can shoot from beyond the arc all day and get three-pointers, but a lot of the major glory comes from getting into the paint, getting those highly contested shots off, getting that slam dunk, and then the crowd goes wild. Not that the crowd doesn't go wild when you're shooting three-pointers all day, but at some point you have to go for it. So this is going to be a lunar transit where, especially after the moon comes on top of Venus, and it comes on top of Neptune, and then it will conjunct Mercury as well, which is still in the shadow period. It's going forward, but now it's in its shadow period still. This is definitely going to be a moment where it's like, are you really going to go for it? Are you really going to make this magical reality happen for you, whatever it looks like to you? Are you really about this manifestation? You know? Because, yeah, you can practice three-pointers all day, and you may, if, you may eventually get good at them, but it's about getting into the paint. It's about getting into the trenches and getting those tough points, even if it's just two points. Yeah, because a lot of people will be like, well, three points is more than two points. If I get good at three-pointers, you know, they'll rack up. Mm, yeah, that's true. That's true. Games could be won on, beyond the arc. But, you know, those, real, those victories that are won in the trenches, those victories that are won when you get in there and you surpass these highly contested shots. That's what makes things exciting, and that really does develop your character as the hero and heroine of your story. And I'm even thinking of another metaphor, there's this anime where I recently watched, which was about a theme park, and how this theme park had like pretty much no visitors, and this individual well, well, he was forced against his will to come to this theme park in many ways. And he was there to revitalize the theme park. So in many ways, you can even look at life like that. Where there is a theme park out there, metaphorically, that 
you can revitalize, and only you can revitalize it with your skills and your talents and your celestial energies, your purpose that you bring forward. And the interesting thing about this theme park is that it was essentially kind of like a Disney World, and the characters in there were supposed to be these magical creatures, and it turns out that they actually were. Of course, they're fooling all the other patrons that come there, thinking that, oh, they're just people in costumes. No, these are the actual forms. But even though these magical beings were in their actual authentic form, that didn't guarantee them success. It took someone seemingly from the outside, who happened to be a Leo in this case, because it showed his birthday in the, in the show, which is kind of funny, right? He was able to come in and remedy the situation and bring the theme park to its higher glory. And even though he had made the promise that he was only going to be at the theme park and take on this managerial position for three months, spoiler alert, he came back and realized that he had a lot of fun doing what he was doing. He made friends, he made connections, and, you know, there can be situations where, you know, you as the light worker, you are there to remedy, but at the same time, you know, it's not just about kind of just passing by and just, you know, doing what you can and then moving forward. And yeah, there are a lot of people to help along the way. But more importantly, this is about going to that theme park within yourself and revitalizing the magic there. Revitalizing it, because it is there, and these magical creatures do exist. These celestial beings do exist, and they're there to help you and to help guide you. Because even though this individual came into this theme park and revitalized it, in many ways the theme park revitalized him as well. It goes two ways. So, are you going to do the hard work and go in the paint and make those highly contested shots? Or are you just going to kind of stand on the outside and just continue shooting from the outside? And you can get good at that, but there's nothing like overcoming obstacles. I appreciate the challenges. I appreciate the challenges. There's nothing like overcoming these obstacles, getting in there, doing the deep work, because the love that comes from that, the smiles that come from that, the laughter that comes from that, the joy that comes from that, it really is unmatched. That is it for your Lunar Transit and Pisces video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. And if you would like a personal reading with me, beloved, you can follow the link in the description below to astrophoenix.com. And as always, my beautiful brothers and sisters, always remember to keep moving forward, to stay focused, and... Yahoo! Smile often.